morning, Sloan. <clears throat> SK here. I just wanted to say a few words about the refuge ruckus. And I am intending to have a live stream later in the day to kind of give my actual after action review of it. And I hope that you will join me on the live stream and give me your perspective if you attended or if you did a virtual ruck. The biggest message that I got at the refuge uh, ruckus was about the purpose of some of those, some of you, uh, people who are Torah observant, who are by themselves, who don't have fellowship. Online fellowship right now is kind of your choice, but something struck me while I was talking to some of the people who, who talked about that with me. Um, <clears throat> Every man is a king and sovereign of his house and priest. He is his family's priest and king, whether there is a family or not. His household is his tent, if that makes sense, right? We're tribal, we're, we're nomadic tent dwellers, right? Historically. So your tent needs to be a safe place for your brethren to come visit you. To see you it needs to be a place where Yahweh's name is revered and where his word is read and obeyed best to your ability whether you have people around you or not you need to be ready every Shabbat and invite people and it doesn't necessarily have to be like a stranger you're inviting but you need to make somehow um, reaching out if there's a Torah observant person in your area, because a lot of times you think you're the only one and the other Torah observant people are in your area, maybe a half hour away, maybe 20 minutes away, maybe an hour away. Uh, I know of uh, believers who have gone as far away as two hours to Shabbat with other believers just to get that fellowship because it's, it's kind of necessary. So, you know, Maybe on a social media, you just start posting that every Shabbat, you, you will be open to fellowship from like 10 to noon or whatever. You're going to pick all the details for yourself. Or maybe on your library um, bulletin board or your little restaurant bulletin board or at your work. Because I've believers have found other believers all over the place. <coughs> In grocery stores, at gas stations they're wearing seed seed or they notice you're wearing seed seed um, mopping floors like it, it's just make yourself ready that's the thing I'm trying to get across make yourself ready and worthy to have other believers into your tent and look for other believers who are reaching out making their tent available and I'll give you one little example. Uh, I met four young men this weekend. They were all from the same place. They had to have been between 20s and 30s. And that's exactly what they're doing in their area. Now, Pastor has said in the past, and it's true that 119 Ministry has a, a you know, a, what do they call it? It's a congregation finder, you know, across the nation. But you need to be putting out your information because as we were doing or people were rucking it occurred to me like this is kind of like a mini exodus just that like the group that was there would have to move from like one part of the the whole convention to another and when we did it's 250 people walking together and i made a comment about it about it being a mini exodus and that's kind of what struck my thought um because hey maybe something happens maybe something happens like a natural disaster and believers in one area need to leave there's a fire there's a flood whatever if you are ready and available and they've met you and know that you're a believer and you're trustworthy and you're serious then they may contact you and say hey can i come camp with you for a while until my area gets back down to you know livable so this is for responsibility right this is for especially men to claim your priesthood and your kingship and to act like you are the believer that you profess to be. Does that make sense? And this is encouragement for me. Get out there, do it. It's time. All right, y'all. Bless you. Shalom.